<laughs> the shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The House That Death Built. cemetery in New England. Three men work furiously in a swirling blizzard, opening a new grave. The headstone lies on one side and reads, Ben Morgenberg, born 1878, died 1948. Oh, come on, come on, what are you stalling for? Get that coffin clear. Well, well. All set, Lapidy. Well, get it open, Rusty. Yeah. Give him a hand, Windsor. Right. It's got to be in there. It's got to. I've got to make sure. Will you hurry up? You want to freeze out here? Get it open. Get it open. It's open. Well, he's in here, all right. Let me see. Let me see him. Go ahead and look. <laughs> yes. Yes. So old Ben Falkenberg finally died. Good. Splendid. All right, let's go. But you hurry, Lafferty. Don't be a fool, Windsor. We've got to get to Falkenberg's house before dark. There's a hundred thousand dollars waiting in there, and nothing can stop us now. <laughs> Tell me our ski trip way out that much, darling. You haven't said a thing for the last ten minutes. I was just wondering, Margot, would it be smart to stop somewhere along here for a while till this storm lets up? This is pretty lonely country. Well, here's a house at the top of this hill. They make out the entrance to the driveway now. Yes. Look, there's someone standing out there by the entrance. Oh, yeah, Margot. Oh, hey there. I beg your pardon. Could you give us a hand, please? What do you want? We don't want to get stuck on the road. Do you think the people in the house could put us up for a few hours? No. What? You know what's good for you? Stay away from that house. But... Keep on driving. Get as far away as you can. Even if it means getting lost on the road. Get out of here. Get out. Don't ever come back. The devil, you say? That's exactly what I do say. The devil's loose in that heap of rotten wood. Now get out of here. Okay. What are we going to do? Drive to the house, Margot. I don't think it can be quite as dangerous as our young friend thinks. It certainly can't be worse than a night in a blizzard. It isn't a very pleasant-looking place, is it? No, it isn't. Looks like a heap of rotten wood. It's all twisty, and it, well, it looks like an insane architect built. <laughs> well, if it'll give us shelter for a while, that's the main thing, Margot. Here's the garage. See, there must be a side entrance somewhere. Good afternoon. I suppose you know you're trespassing. Uh, who are you? My name is Lafferty. I'm the butler. Well, you want you... shelter in this house? The answer is no. Most decidedly no. Get back in your car and leave. But... That's impossible, Mr. Lafferty. This house has been closed. It will remain closed until it's burned. Until it's burned? Yes, madam. I've been instructed by the owner to burn it. Because fire is the only thing that will destroy the death and horror in it. Will you please leave? Do you have a telephone? My dear sir, will you be trivial in the face of death? Of course you have. I see the wires. Come on, Margot. Stop! If I'm going to get out of here, I've got to get a tow car to hold me. I'm going to fall. Now, don't be a fool. Don't go into that house. If you value your life, don't go in there. Rusty! Rusty! Coming right up, my pretty... What are you doing with that gun, you fool? Put that away. He's just covering that Cranston guy. In case I was holed up in the garage. 
You know him? Who don't? Lamont Cranston, playboy. His pal of the police commissioner. A dangerous girl, Margot Lane. And look, Lafferty, we've got to get him out of here. But not with a gun, you idiot. Well, how? The way we decided to get rid of intruders before we came here. Frightened them. Like that line you hear at Cranston? Yes. You almost had me believe it. Well, they will believe before we are finished. Now go get Windsor from the gate. I'll have a few bitter words to say to him. He was stationed there to keep people out. Now we'll have to work overtime to get rid of Cranston. But how, Lafferty, how? Leave that to me, Rusty. Leave that to me. Dark, I won't know the floor if I see it. Well, Mark, what is going on in this house? Not very much in the looks of it. It's Butler, Lafferty, and the young man at the key. What are they trying to warn us about? I don't know, Margo. Wait a minute, let's, let's try that door there. This house is twistier inside than it is outside. It's a zigzag labyrinth. Who are you? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Get your hands up and don't move. Do you mind putting a light on? I asked you what you're doing in my house. Speak up. Your house? Why, the butler said it was The butler? He said his name was Lafferty. Who else is outside? Quick. My dear Miss... Uh... The name doesn't matter. I think it does, my Who's dear. Who's that? Oh! Hey! Speak up. Who is it? Don't try to shoot again, my dear. You can't see in the dark. I can. If you raise that revolver, I'll blast your hand well, off. if you don't mind, I think I'll light a match. I'd like to know who's murdering who. Oh, it's a charming situation. Margaret, there's a candle on the table. Right. We're all strangers, aren't we? Mr. Lafferty claims to be butler of this crazy house, but he's unacquainted with this young lady who claims to own it. Mr. Cranston. How do you know my name? Now, look, mister, I want you... Going into the gate. What's your name? Windsor. And you, young lady? Jane Archer. So, we have a spook house and three lying strangers. I suppose you all cover each other with your guns while I phone for a tow car and the local police. Must be a phone. Don't look for it, Don't Mr. Cranston. Don't look up! Very interesting. United front against the police, eh? What are you people up to in this madhouse? The Green Ghost! Witness! Lafferty! The Green Ghost! That was Rusty. Rusty? Rusty well, from the hall. Put away your guns and come out, all of you. Hold the light a little closer, Margo. All right. Oh, good Lord. Well, this is a mess. This man, Rusty, you called him? Yeah. Shot three times in the chest. So I see. But by what? Who shot him? I don't know. Wait a minute, look at this. There's a trap on the side of the hall. Three guns set there like a firing line. And there's a treadle attachment to the triggers. As Rusty stepped on it, the trap swung open, and the guns in the wall blasted the life out of him. But what was he screaming? Something about the green ghost. I don't know, Margot. Now listen, all of you, and get this straight. We're all of us trapped in this twisted house, and some of you have declared war. My dear Mr. Margot and I are going back to the living room and call the police. I wouldn't try any gunpowder persuasion, Lafferty. Really, Mr. Cranston? Really. I took the liberty of borrowing Rusty's gun while I was examining it. You wouldn't like to trade shots with me, would you, Lafferty? I see you wouldn't. All right, Marco, let's go. Hello. Hello, hello. It's no use, Marco. The line's dead. Blizzard must have knocked the wires down. Then we're stuck here. Right. In a house without light, without a phone, and with three maniacs who apparently dislike each other as much as us. I want to get out of here, Lamont. I don't know if we can find our way out now, Margot. And even if we could, there's been a murder committed. We've got to find out who's responsible. But what can we do? Now, you can sit tight and wait here for me, darling. The shadow's going to pay a visit. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yes. Step into this alcove a moment. Well? Congratulations, my dear boy. For what? Oh, don't be modest. You were magnificent. How did you manage to make Rusty scream that gibberish about ghosts before you killed him? Before I... That was a two-edged sword. With one blow, you eliminated that little man, and you created an air of supernatural menace that will certainly frighten the others away. You're crazy. You killed Rusty. My dear boy. You killed Rusty for his share of the money. You want to split two ways instead of three. Maybe you only want to split one way after you kill me. Windsor, that's ridiculous. I swear that I never (laughs) killed... Who's that? Someone who laughs at two modest killers. With poison in their hearts and doubt in their minds. But there isn't anybody I can see. This is the shadow. The shadow? (laughs) What money brought you to this house, Lafferty? Answer with the truth. Well, I... One hundred thousand dollars. Whose money is it? It belonged to Jerry Crane. You lied. Jerry Crane was a thief executed for murder ten years ago. Jerry Crane tried to bribe the state's executioner with that money to fix the execution so he'd live. No man can live through an execution, Windsor. Well, Jerry thought he could. He bribed the executioner, a man named Ben Falkenberg. Falkenberg was caught and dismissed. He built this house and lived here with the money for ten years. He died about a month ago. No one found the money, Shadow. No one. It must be here. It's got to be here. Now, look. Look, Shadow. If you know where it is, we're split with you. Three ways. Fair and square. The fair and square way you split with Rusty? I didn't kill him, I swear it. You're a liar. Now, if you will help us find it, Shadow... You cannot buy truth, Lafferty. You cannot buy justice. And you cannot buy the Shadow. Sitting here in this creepy room getting the shakes. Well? Windsor and Lafferty accuse each other of murdering Rusty. What are they asking? Money. Fortune hidden somewhere in this house by a former executioner named Ben Falkenberg. What's Jane Archer at? Maybe she killed her. Maybe. That's going to be the Shadow's next visit. Do you know where she is? Well, I thought she was. <laughs> oh. That's Jane. She's coming down that hall. Come on. I don't know if she's in trouble. This is another pony swoop trap. She must be further down the hall. Yes, that same long winding hall where Rusty was killed. Oh, Mom, I wonder. Look up. Now look up ahead, Margot. See that tiny window? In the door. Oh, Jane, I'll behind her. She's caught in there. Somebody coming out. Hurry up. Look out that room. Looks like a gas chamber. Like an executioner's gas chamber. Hold your breath, Jane. Get away from the door. I have to shoot the lock. Get back from the door and hold your breath. house of Ben Falkenberg, who has died and left a fortune concealed in the rotting rooms, Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane find Jane Archer, one of the four mysterious people who are searching for the money, trapped in the replica of an executionist's gas chamber. Cranston has just fired the sixth shot into the heavy steel lock. Look out now, Margot. I've got to use my shoulder. Ed, what's that? Who's doing the shoot? Give me a hand, Windsor, quick. Get this door knocked in. Right. Together now. Once more, does it? Hold your breath. What's that? The gas chamber. Help me get the girl out. Jane Archie is almost killed. Take her arm. Come on. Steady. Get that door closed, Margot. Right. Now get her down the hall here. Jane. How do you feel, Miss Archie? Oh, she's all right. Just a touch of methane. Lucky it wasn't cyanide. That kills like a thunderbolt. I... What happened, Miss Archie? I was looking. Walked into the room. The door started to close. Automatic. Couldn't stop it. You just got here in time. Searching for what, Miss Archer? What? You said you were looking. Looking for what? Why? Well, what were you looking for? I don't know. This uh... isn't time for secrets, Miss Archer. Let her alone. Well, I thought you two were enemies. You were pointing guns at each other half an hour ago. I wasn't pointing any gun. Lafferty was doing all that. Lafferty? What's the matter? Where is that? You heard the shots and came running, Winter. Why didn't Lafferty? 
Maybe because he set this trap, too. Where did you leave him with? Wandering around this rotten honeycomb of a house. What's the matter? Bonnie? Sounds almost like drop. Yes, it does. Come on. But who's pounding? Why? Where's it coming from? I wish we were 20 miles away, stuck in a snow just catching the moon. Wait, Margot. Coming from this room. Winter, Miss Archer, in here quickly. What's the matter? What is it? I found Lafferty. <gasps> what? Swinging in the air, his heels banging on the wall. He's been hanged. Another murder. It's very much dead. Lafferty wandered into this room, stepped on that trap, and a spring noose caught him at the neck and whipped him into the air. Oh. What's the matter, Miss Arch? What? You don't like murder. Hmm? Come on. Who are you, Miss Archer? Why are you in this house? I can't tell can't you. Can't you understand, Miss Archer, that Lafferty was right? This house is filled with death and terror. This is the time for the truth. All right. Who are you? Jane Crane. Crane? Jerry Crane's daughter? Yes. Jerry Crane? The man who bribed Ben Falkenberg? The man who was... Was executed? Yes. I'm his daughter. I came here to see if I could find that money. The money he stole from the Chase Bond Company the night he... He murdered the guard. I had a crazy idea it might help clear the name. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Winsor? <laughs> You're right, Cranston. It is time for the truth. You'll get a kick out of this confession. I work for the Chase Bond Company. Detective assigned to recover that money. What? Yeah, I was playing along with Lafferty and his stooge to find the money. Of course, I figured this house would be harmless after Ben Falkenberg died. He's not dead. What? Ben isn't dead. He's somewhere in this house. He was the green ghost Rusty saw before he was killed. Oh, wait a second. Lafferty and I saw the body. You didn't see Ben's body. He's still alive. Wait a second. He's still alive and in this house, setting death traps. None of us is going to be safe until he's caught. Yeah, that's right. Well, I think I'd better start looking for him. Wait a second, Winston. Now, look, Cranston, it's my job. Your job to... was the money. I'll forget that. The big thing now is to find the killer. That's my job. You better stay with Jane, Margot. Am I? All right, darling. That's the way you want it. Now, look, Cranston, you might run into another one of those death traps two feet from here. I'm afraid we'll just have to take our chances. Okay. Good luck. Thanks, we may need it. Come on, Margaret. Sharp as a razor, we'd have been sliced like butter. Ma, we're not going to keep on. Got to, Ma. 
Mark, what'll be next? What'll be next? I don't know, darling. Mark. Yes? There isn't much candle left. My fingers are getting burned. Try to hold out a little longer, Margot. The head of the stairs. What if one of the traps is solitary confinement for life? What? Oh. What happened to the candle? It just blew out. There was a draft. A sudden gust. Shut. Get back against the wall. What's the matter now? A sudden gust can mean a door open somewhere. Maybe another trap starting. I'll have a look. As much as I can look in this. No, Lamont, I don't want to be left behind. Please. Lamont. Lamont, I'm getting all mixed up in the dark. There's so many doors and corners and turns. Lamont. Lamont. Good evening, my dear. I've been waiting for you. Come in. Come in. No, I... Come in, please. Cut in, my dear. Don't oh, scream, please. It's all right. Bend your friend. Your dear friend. Now, isn't this nice? Isn't this lovely? It's the death That's the electric chair. That's right, my dear. That's right. Now, come with Ben. Ben? You're Ben Falcon. I let them think old Ben was dead. So they'd be company. Friends looking for the money. I've had three today. They died well, very well indeed. But not as well as you will, my dear. Now come along. No, no. no. Trust me, my dear. Many's the one that I've coaxed to my chair. In the time. No, please, no. Sit down, child. Enjoy your kindness. A great kindness. All right. Now you're entirely ready. No, please, no! No, no! Don't touch that switch, Walking Bird. Who? Who's that? Who spoke? This is the shadow. The shadow? There's no shadow in this room. It's all bright, light, and beautiful, Karen. <laughs> Stop laughing. What a fool you are. Do you love death so dearly that you want to die? No, no, I don't want to die. I wouldn't be able to continue with my execution. But you will die for the murder of three people in this house. Oh, no, not me. There'll be no one to tell. No one will know. After this pretty girl now dies, no one will live to tell. The shadow knows, Ben. The shadow knows the truth. Where are you? Come out and fight. You'll be brought to justice, Ben. I will not. You'll pay for your crimes, Ben. There is no escape. I could find you. I'd be safe. I would. There is no escape, Ben. You'll burn for murder. You'll burn. Burn. Yes. Yes, burn. I have my own switchboard. Don't touch those wires. The current has saved me all my life. It'll save me in death. Stop. <laughs> trouble holding on to Jade and the money at the same time. I've got the money. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> I can't get over old Falkenberg hiding up in that execution chamber with $100,000 all these years. Faking his death so that people would be lured into his death house. Well, the scandal of the bribe and his dismissal must have really snapped his mind. I think the most ironic part was the way he died by electrocution himself. Well, he wasn't electrocuted, Mark. Wasn't electrocuted? No. He was. I saw him die. Not from electrocution. He was electrocuted. He staggered against the control panel, grabbed the live wire, and was killed instantly. Not by electricity. By shock. What do you mean? You remember the blizzard? Mm-hmm. The phone and power lines were down. There wasn't any current in the house. Those wires were dead. But in the morning... He died from the shock of his own imagination, Margaret. Ben Falkenberg was killed by his belief in his own deadness. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 